Hey guys, uh, I just want to make a quick video um, detailing the process of crafting a wand for Stormbrand. Uh, this also could work for other spells. Uh, you just modify the process slightly. Or um, potentially use different resources to modify the final item to get your desired outcome. Uh, in our situation, we were looking for plus one all spell, plus one lightning, uh, ace link spell damage mod with non chaos is extra chaos, uh, cast speed and crit multi. That's uh, what we were looking for for the brand wand. So let's jump into how we did it. So the first part is we fractured a profane wand with uh, plus one all spell. Uh, after that, we started fossiling it with metallic fossils, which you can see here, this process. I'm spamming metallics to get plus one to lightning uh, spell skills. And we hit it right here. Pause this real quick. At this point, we have the plus one, the fractured mod. So this mod is always on since it's fractured. We hit our plus one lightning. We have a prefix that's full right now. Uh, the prefix that we're trying to get also is this one right here, the chosen prefix. So to get rid of this modifier, because it does not have a caster tag on it, you see damage, elemental, lightning, and attack. And we have an open suffix. We can benchcraft. Uh, can roll caster modifiers and then an all orb the wand to force this mod off and not lose this mod. And we'll see that uh, shortly in this video. So can roll caster, and then we annul orb. And at this point, that prefix is now gone. So now we have an open prefix. Now, there's two ways you can go about getting this mod. The spell damage with the non-chaos is extra chaos. There's um, actually running your syndicate mastermind with Aceling rank three inside of research. And then you can uh, A-sling the wand that way. Um, it's much less risky because that way you don't you have like no chance of um, accidentally putting on a caster prefix with the Veiled Chaos Orb. Um, we actually did the Veiled Chaos route because uh, this was done in SSF. And in order to... Um, A-sling an item the tra uh, traditional way through masterminds and running syndicate in SSF, you would have to go through and run your whole syndicate board and set everything up. Uh, that takes a really long time to do in SSF, whereas like in a trade league situation, you could uh, go on like TFT or something and uh, buy the A-sling from someone who already ran it. So Veiled Chaos, what a Veiled Chaos Orb does is it will re-roll your item and give you one Veiled modifier. It can either give a prefix or a suffix. So you'll see us using it right here. Of course, of course, let me mention what we just saw. We, we do prefixes can't be changed on the item, so we don't lose the plus one lightning that we had. And then we Veiled Chaos. So here, this is the Veiled mod, and we got a Veiled prefix, which is what we want. Now, there is nothing you can do to block mods for the Unveil because you got Veiled prefixes. So it's one of those things where you have to get kind of lucky. It might take two or three tries, or it could take as many as you know, 20 or 30. It's, kinda, it's a very RNG-intensive step. So 
We got our Veil Prefix. I'm going to take it over to Aceling here in a second. We have the plus one Lightning and the plus one All Spell. We have to go on Veil it, to, and hopefully we get the spell damage. Now, Aceling, or the Unveil at Jun is going to offer three modifiers. And you just have to hope that one of those mods is the spell damage with not chaos is extra chaos. And here we got it. We actually hit it. We got attack, chaos pin, we got uh, Ellie pin, and then we got the spell damage, not chaos, extra chaos. This is the desired outcome. Uh, another outcome you could get that's not bad is spell damage with mana regen. That one's okay. This one is number one. I would say that's number two. Um, and then your other two misses that are acceptable but not ideal are lightning damage with chance to shock and cold damage with chance to freeze. Those are not ideal, but they're okay. So now we have our prefixes finished on this wand. We have the plus one all spell, Fractured. We have the Lightning plus one, and then we have the spell damage, not cast extra chaos. So these prefixes are complete. The next step is to block prefixes and then reforge caster until we get a decent tier cast speed, which we do right here. I think it was maybe four or five tries. We got pretty lucky. We ended up with a T2 cast speed. Getting T2 or T1 is hard. T1 is very hard. It has low weight. Um, it's about a 1 in 50 approximately on Reforged Caster. Uh, T2 is about a 1 in 25. But uh, we were able to get it. So the first try we got T1 Spell Crit. It's a good mod, but not for us. Temp number two. We got T7 Cast Speed. And each time you do a caster reforge, you have to lock prefixes, otherwise you'll lose those mods. And it costs two divines per attempt. And here we got it. We got the T the T2 cast speed right here. So that's uh I would say if you're going after mirror tier, obviously you want to go for T1, but uh we're in SSF here. I think T2 is perfectly fine too, even in trade league, T2 is very good. And then the final part to get crit multi, we benchcraft uh, can't roll caster, so we can't accidentally hit um, spell crit chance when we go to X slam. This is probably this might be the most difficult part of the craft aside from the build chaos portion in the X slam mod. So here, what we're doing is. We put can't roll caster on the, the wand first, and then we're going to slam it with an exalt. Um, we have can't roll caster, so if you look at, let's see if we can go forward a little bit. If you look at the modifiers on the wand, um, let's see, hold on, let's go back here real quick so we can see. All right, if you look at the modifiers on the wand right now, we have caster, caster, Caster and Caster. As long as we have the Can't Roll Caster on there, none of these mods can be annulled. So that's how we preserve these mods. The Fractured one can never leave, but these three are untouched because we have Can't Roll Caster on it when we go to annul. So let's go back again. First X slam, we got. Let's see. We got fire damage. 
Accidentally divided here. Glad I didn't. Let me null it off. We got intelligence. Null. You got a chance to ignite. Sometimes when you go to ignore, you can knock off the bench mod. Just put it back on. It costs a divine, but put it back on so you don't accidentally annul um, one of the desired mods. You got fire damage again. You got crit chance, which is uh, attack crit chance. You got intelligence. Intelligence again. And here we hit tier two crit multi, which is about, it's around one in a hundred chance. It's very difficult to get crit multi. You have about a 5% chance to get any tier of crit multi, but getting tier two or tier one is about a 1% chance each. It's about a one in a hundred. Um, the reason that we go for the X Slam instead of using an all crit is because the current version of Harvests um, augs work like uh, like an A Sling, where it adds a mod and then removes a random modifier. And in that case, you could potentially lose your cap speed. So the safest way is to try to X Slam your final mod. You could go the route of uh, all critting. I think it's about a 1 in 12 to get T2 or T1 um, crit multi if you go that route. But you also have um, the chance to potentially lose your cast speed. That's why I don't I didn't go that way. And it's also SSF, so uh, the amount of life force for an AUG craft on AUG crit, I think it's around 20,000 life force. Which, uh, trying to farm that in SSF is like, Brutally difficult. So going for the X slam is the route we took, and we got really lucky and hit it. To finish this wand off, we just bench craft uh, double damage. That's that's how you finish it. Uh, at some point, I'd probably divine this. We don't have harvest divines anymore, so I might actually leave it like this. But we need to harvest enchant this with uh, elemental damage for quality, and then we need to go helicate and syndicate to get 30 quality. And now this one would be uh, finished at that point. But this is just a quick video. I wanted to go through the process of how I was able to craft this. Um, I think we spent about roughly 25 divines in currency to take this one from start to finish. Uh, I would say that is very far under the normal costs. I think you're probably more likely to spend between 50 and 80 divines to make something like this. And if you're going after mirror tier, you're going to spend more than the cost of a mirror to hit everything T1. Mirror tier crafting is very expensive, and you always, almost, I shouldn't say always, but unless you're absurdly lucky, you're going to spend at least a mirror, if not more, crafting it. But uh, yeah, just want to take you guys through that real quick, and hopefully that helps. Um, you can modify steps of this slightly if you wanted to craft a wand like this for another build. So like, for example, if you wanted to have like plus one all spell and plus one cold, you would do frigid spam at the beginning instead of metallic, right? Or if you wanted plus one fizz, you could do, um, I would actually use a two socket rezo in that situation because you want to block attack mods. So you would use um, an etheric fossil, which is a caster fossil, and you would pair that with a jagged fossil. So you get more fizz mods and you get less attack mods. You'll have a much easier time trying to get plus one fizz spells in that situation. But there's, there's just little modifications here and there. The overall, like, general crafting process is the same, but there's just very minor uh, changes you would make um, to cater the wand to your specific needs. But what we have here, this is just, like, a really good brand wand.
So it's good for like Storm Brand or Penance Brands. Either one would be good. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm going to hopefully make some more videos like this in the future. Uh, just to, you know, kind of go through the crafting process on items like these. Uh, so hopefully you guys can, you know, get something made yourself. And I have to, um, you know, almost get robbed blindly in trade by, you know, spending 10 or 15 or 20 more divines than you actually have to for an item. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you soon.